I'm going to go on to from to treatment from uh, tests. And when I was uh, chief resident in Tata Hospital in India, I had a concern about patients who would come to this center in Bombay from all over India, and after being diagnosed with breast cancer, being told that if you can stay in Bombay for six months, uh, for six weeks after the operation, we can preserve your breast. But if you have to go back to your town or your village, then we have to do a mastectomy. The reason for needing to have stay in Bombay for six weeks was to have radiotherapy, which is which was mandatory after a lumpectomy procedure. Otherwise, the results would be much worse. The recurrence would go up. So for breast cancer, when the cancers are small, we can do a lumpectomy and give radiotherapy. Radiotherapy takes six weeks. But if you can't have the radiotherapy by staying in the hospital for six, staying in the in the city for six weeks, you need to have a mastectomy. So that was a very difficult uh, thing to say to patients. So I did an analysis of mastectomy specimens of patients with small tumors, and this was back in 1990s. And when I cut the mastectomy specimens into slices and take X-rays and take multiple tissues from biopsies from these specimens, what I found is there are cancers in other parts of the breast in addition to the main tumor, which were not known before, and these patients would have otherwise, in places where they could have radiotherapy, have a lumpectomy only. So that means, it led to the idea, oh, that means everybody should have a mastectomy. Patients should not have a lumpectomy at all. But simultaneously, we knew from trials of breast conservation that when you give, do a lumpectomy, and either give radiotherapy or don't give radiotherapy, if there is a recurrence, it occurs only around the tumor. So if there's a recurrence of cancer, it doesn't appear in the site of the, where the mouse is, at the site of the spongiocentric cancers, but at the site of the tumor. So that paradoxically led to the idea that why not treat the area around the tumor? So these more sensitive tests which are, which are being done today are finding being extra cancers, which is an example of our diagnosis. And what we decided back in 1990s is why not do a trial to test whether giving radiotherapy to only the area around a tumor is as good as giving whole breast radiotherapy. So this academic insight led to the development of a machine to give radiation around the tumor. So in 1994 to 1996, 1998, we developed this machine to give radiotherapy around a tumor in order to test an idea whether giving radiation only around the tumor bed is as good as giving radiotherapy to the whole breast. So then we started, uh, first we tested whether this machine is safe to use, feasible to use, and that we, in between 98 to 99, mm -hmm. and in 2000 we launched the trial. So this machine involves a spherical applicator which goes and sits in the tumor bed, and if this works, you'll see in the next 13 seconds uh, how the applicator is inserted into the tumor bed and radiotherapy is given to tissues immediately around the tumor. And this is done immediately after lumpectomy. And patient wakes up and then goes home. They don't, in 80% of the times, they don't need to have any further radiotherapy. Now it looked very nice, but we needed to test whether it's as good as, or not too worse than, not having normal radiotherapy. So we randomized patients to have normal radiotherapy for three to six weeks, versus having this surgery and lumpectomy, uh, lumpectomy and radiotherapy. So there were 3,451 patients from 33 centers in 11 countries. It started in Europe and then spread to other continents. So this was, uh, it's interesting, 14 years ago, <coughs> I gave a lecture in Barcelona talking about this trial. And this is the team that uh, did this, Professor Michael Baum and Professor Tobias, the radiation oncologist. Uh, we uh, devised the technique. This is the International Steering Committee. And these are the various hospitals and patients from these hospitals who need to be acknowledged for making this trial happen. Now, many people are using this. This is a meeting in 2015 in Mannheim. That's in the US and that's in 2016. So the trial was very slow to take uptake. And then in 2010, we published the first paper with the results. We continued recruitment and published the second paper in 2013-14. And Lancet put our conclusion on its masthead saying that for selected patients, this treatment should be given as an alternative to whole breast radiotherapy. And I'll explain the trial briefly. Trial was randomizing patients with to have whole breast radiotherapy versus radiotherapy as a single shot in the operation theater. And what is the outcome that is important for the patient? 
what is my chance of being alive without a local recurrence? And that result is this. You can see the red and the blue lines of the two randomized groups literally on top of each other. And there's no difference in a five-year survival without local recurrence. We see the survival was similar. And to test the original hypothesis, to see whether the cancers in other parts of the breast actually grow or not, we tested how would it, what would we expect. So we had 803 patients who had only radiotherapy or in the tumor bed. 803 <coughs> patients, out of these patients, two thirds would have cancers present in the breast. Half of these would be in other parts of the breast. Therefore, out of 803 patients, you would have 405 patients who should have had cancers in other parts of the breast, which were not treated. Left untreated, through the follow-up period, we had seven recurrences in the scar, seven in the, six in the other breast, and out of these 405 foci, we only had two recurrences. So clearly, these, were, these if we found, would be overdiagnosed, and thankfully, were not being treated without any harm to the patient. In the randomized trial, there were only two recurrences in the other part of the breast, whether they had external beam radiotherapy or didn't have external beam radiotherapy to the whole breast. Now an important endpoint, which was secondary in the trial, was death. There were more deaths in the trial compared to local recurrences. And there were more deaths from other causes than breast cancer, suggesting that a lot of this population may not be true cancers that are troublesome. And we found that there was overall fewer deaths if patients had focused radiotherapy compared to whole breast radiotherapy. Now to put it in perspective, when patients have whole breast radiotherapy, lungs and heart do get irradiated. Whatever effects are done, some of, some of some radiation goes to the heart and the lung. And therefore it could, ooh. Thank you very much. <laughs> Important slide. Yes, so you find that there's fewer deaths from, uh, fewer deaths overall, but statistically significant fewer non-breast cancer deaths. And this difference in non-breast cancer deaths was because of fewer deaths from other cancers and fewer deaths from cardiovascular causes. And this is, is this possible? People feel that radiotherapy takes many more years to, uh, to have this effect. But in this study published in the New England Journal of Medicine from the Oxford group, it shows that the effect of radiation on cardiac mortality happens in the first four years, first five years. And uh, it is therefore, it, if it is detectable, it will be detectable. In olden days, when this di difference was found after 15 years, 50% of patients used to die from breast cancer. Now, only 5% die. So one and a half percent difference is easily detectable today. And what we did was, we did a meta-analysis of trials of localized radiation versus whole breast radiation. And this is published in the current issue of the Red Journal. And in this meta-analysis, we found that indeed, if radiation is localized to the area around the tumor rather than the whole breast, you find there are fewer deaths from other causes, leading to a fewer overall mortality. Remember, this number is a 1.3% reduction in overall mortality. It's a small number. A small number applied to a large population makes a big difference. So targeting to the radio th to just the tumor bed reduced overall mortality by 1.3%. Now in this trial, now this is what is important for this meeting, is two thirds of the patients were screen detected. And in the screen detected population, we found breast cancer deaths were equal in the trial. There are 2,102 patients. Non-breast cancer deaths were statistically fewer, and all deaths were just about, but fewer as well, with a p-value of 0.05. So, by reduce, by the, in these patients, would you offer a patient whole breast radiotherapy knowingly that they could increase their chance of death? There's another twist here. We analyzed how much does it take for these patients to travel for radiotherapy. In UK, the red dots are the radiotherapy centers, the green areas are at least 15 miles away from a radiotherapy center. You can see it's a large part of a developed country away from a radiotherapy center. And mean distance traveled in a typical UK patient is about 753 miles. Well, it takes 30 hours and 215 kilograms of carbon dioxide is spent. So it's good for the environment if you use this. So there are 20,000 patients suitable for our target IORT in the UK. Extrapolating, of course, this is not real. It may be wrong, but it's an extrapolation of 1.3% mortality reduction to 20,000 patients who might be suitable 
would be 260 fewer deaths a year in the UK. Four per week of delay in this implementation. If a faulty car, this is one of the sur my surgeon friends who asked this question, if a faulty car costs 260 deaths per year, would you allow it to be on the road still? It would be recalled. So should all EBRT machines for these patients not be implemented? So it, at least for such patients, IORT should be given as an option. It is being given in 250 to 300 centers around the world, and about 20,000 patients have had the treatment around the world, but it is slow to implement. In the UK, NICE published guidelines two years ago saying, yes, we are going to implement this, but it has been slow to uptake. They have said that it should continue to be used, but there is no funding available. But we hope and pray that reason uh, is, prevails and that everybody who is suitable gets this treatment. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? These are invasive cancers. All Not all invasive, invasive and in, in situ. Yeah. Uh, did you wish to define sorry, just, a just, suitable patient? Just one sec, sorry, you first. Yeah. Why do you think it's become uh, getting more rapidly uh, Well, in more the more words more. of uh, uh, the chief editor of the Red Journal, these words are um, a lot of careers are built on fractionated radiotherapy regimes. Mm -hmm. So this new treatment can be considered a quantum leap and development or a big trend. I'm not saying it. These are words said by him. Okay. Yes. Did you wish to define a suitable patient for us so we know who we're talking about? Sorry, did you define? Define oh, so a suitable patient. A suitable patient for this treatment is someone over the age of 45 with a tumor less than 3.5 3 centimeters in size, which is a single tumor as far as normal imaging goes. These patients did not have MRI, so you don't need an MRI to do the 6% patients had an MRI. So uh, yeah, that's all, nothing else. Invasive breast cancer, which is Negative less than 3.5 centimeters. Sorry? Negative axilla, clinically. Clinically negative axilla, but that was not a requirement for the trial. Okay. Yeah, uh, it went about 18% patients were known positive, and it did not make a difference to the outcome. I'm going to save any other questions until after the session because we've got our final speaker. Thanks very much, Jan. Thank you.